Ephesus, home to one of the seven ancient wonders of the world, the second largest city of the Roman Empire, the place where Paul wrote some of the most iconic verses in the Bible, and the Virgin Mary may have lived after the death of Jesus. And now it is one of the largest, most well-preserved archeological sites in the world. Today is gonna be a historic day. If you joined us in the last video, we flew from beautiful Cappadocia to Izmir, Turkey, and now I've been driving in Turkey. This is our first time renting a car internationally. Um, but I've been scratching it. Look at him. Wow. Yeah, not, not bad at all. I am the only one using turn signals though. <laughs> but it is so gorgeous driving along the Turkish countryside. I feel like we're driving in Malibu through like mountains with a view of the sea and the beach it's gorgeous we are headed to ephesus the ancient city basically your options were to go on a very expensive tour or take a very elaborate process of trains to buses to taxis so we opted for renting a car and driving there so that we can take our full amount of time we're kind of slow museum going people but when we opted for renting the car i had no idea just how gorgeous the drive would be like i feel like we're on the pacific coast highway right now like the aegean coast highway i guess um, and i'm loving that i'm not having to drive yeah i did my first second and third european roundabouts what a big day it's gonna be an amazing mad venture Woo! Merhaba from, from the ancient, ancient city, city of Ephesus. Ephesus. Ephesus is a big part of Christian history, Greek history, Roman history, like so many parts of history that you study growing up like are all coming together here in Ephesus. We are so excited to be exploring on this hot, hot day. It's very sunny. <laughs> and there is very little shade. But we are here in the Great Theater, which is one of the biggest, possibly the biggest theater in all of ancient history. It holds 25,000 people. And historically, these ancient theaters held like 10% of the city's population. So they're assuming there must have been a quarter million Ephesians here in the city. Initially, the theater was Greek. I know nothing except that I know nothing. But then when the Romans took over, it became a Roman theater. <laughs> they, they added a couple modifications, like a, a nice retaining wall so that the, uh, the blood from the, the gladiators wouldn't get on people's togas. <laughs> <laughs> We've been to at least one other ancient Greek city. We've been to Delphi in Greece, and it was absolutely beautiful. The location was phenomenal. And I will say, like, the Greeks knew where to set up a city. Like, where we are right now here in the theater, you just have this view of the countryside and the mountains and like I mean check this out like even if the performance was bad you at least have the natural beauty to make up for it <laughs> crickets <laughs> I drive it's my first day of opera okay a lot of performers have performed here like Sting and Diana Ross like they actually still were doing like modern performances here right now they've put a halt on all of it while they make sure that everything is secure enough for like the vibrations of the large crowds but it's pretty cool that like they, this is still sort of in use today and maybe will be again and we learned all of these facts from the Rick Steves audio tour on my first trip to Europe with my parents they introduced me to Rick Steves Rick Steves audio Europe he's the best there's like a lot of free history lessons and stuff on here but also a lot of free tours so we're actually doing like his walking tour of Ephesus right here well where was this clapping when I was doing my opera Popcorn! Get your popcorn! This is the ancient concession stand for the ancient theater here behind us. It dates back to like 1000 BC. I think the prettiest concession stand I've ever seen. But there's some sort of show going on here, so we're gonna go see what that's all about. Woo! 
We saved him. We are here at the Ephesus Mall. This is the commercial Agora. This is where people would have come for pretty much everything. Seafood, meat, olive oil, like all of the grocery shopping, but also a shopping mall, any clothes. And the crazy thing is like where Ivan is pointing, like that's how much they had to dig to find all the remains of the Agora here. Earth reclaiming the city of Ephesus. Archaeologists have started reassembling it and kind of laying it out the way it would have been. So you see this square area with pillars all along the edges of it. And then the stores would have been in the center here. They would have a section for fish, a section for olive oil, like, you know, just as we would expect today. And there'd be a nice shade over all of this that the pillars were supporting up. I wish that shade were still here today. Look at how well that one is preserved there. You see all the engravings that they cut into the stone to make that, that like artwork. I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of biased. I like ruins. I really loved uh, when I visited Rome, very similar. Sometimes it looks like just a pile of rubble, just a pile of broken stone. But I just love imagining in my head like how it would have been assembled, like a big old Lego. <laughs> also, the Roman Empire is awesome and like way ahead of its time for when it was. No punctuation, it's just one run-on sentence. It's said that you can tell how successful a civilization is by how many books they have. So here in the library of of Celsius, there used to be 12,000 books stored. Oh, sorry, volumes stored. I make that correction because in the beginning, the knowledge was stored on papyrus scrolls. But the civilization with the most number of books, Alexandria, didn't want another civilization to beat them, so they stopped giving the, the Romans papyrus. So they invented parchment, you know, books, <laughs> that as we know them today, you may remember them from like libraries of your youth. But you can really tell like how much emphasis was put in education here. Like the beautiful, beautiful architecture just making this look like this welcoming and like really cool place to be. Thanks to the invention of books, this became the third largest library in the ancient world. Honestly, one of my favorite things is a bathroom with a view and this is quite the view. So here, this is the public restroom. About 40 people could be on the toilet at the same time. There was running water here underneath. And in the middle, this beautiful fountain with mosaics. It was a lovely public restroom, honestly. Sounds pretty ideal other than the fact that you're sharing it with 39 mm -hmm. other people who but you can all see. But with 39 other people, it becomes like a hangout spot. And you like socialize here and <laughs> have fun. Yeah, very fun. <laughs> Sanitation was taken seriously here. There was running water, there was like vinegar for cleaning, like all sorts of things were like put into place to like keep it clean. And I think that's pretty awesome actually, especially for such an ancient civilization. Do we even know about germs then? I don't think so. I think we just knew, good to be clean. Cool to be clean. We are in the Roman bathhouse, which was both about getting clean, but also about relaxation, like, and like socializing, yeah. rejuvenating. The general population, the everyday man, came here every day. Like, they didn't charge much at all, the smallest coin, and they were just able to enjoy this, this leisure time, which, you know, you don't think of 2,000 years ago that like people had that much leisure time. You think they'd be toiling in the farms or taking care of their more, most basic needs the Roman Empire provided. Yeah, and it was what you would think of as like a spa. Yeah. Like it's like you go into like a hot room, you go into a like a cool room, a steam bath, No a scrub, electricity. Like it's like, Gotta yeah. remember that too. Yeah. No electricity at all, just using physics and nature to, to accommodate these things. Getting to go to essentially a spa every single day for your smallest coin, Let's pay a penny and go to a spot every single day. Like I am so down. No wonder the innovation that came out of here, that people had the time to relax and think and it's really cool. 
age of enlightenment. Speaking of enlightening, this is the second theater where they would have had political meetings that we assume would have gone something like this. Ready for our city council meeting? Take baths every day. Woo, take baths every day. Spa time. Woohoo, let's all go to the spa. Cheap spas. <laughs> And while we tend to try to escape the tourist crowds when we travel, what's cool is that these crowds are sort of accurate. Like it was a busy metropolis here. Picture everyone in togas instead of shorts, and that's what it would have looked like. <laughs> it's obvious that Ephesus was a pretty big deal. And because of its influence, it attracted some of Christ's earliest followers. The Apostle Paul came here as a missionary in around 52 AD. And while he was here, he wrote his first letter to the Corinthians. Love is patient, love is kind, love is not boastful or proud or rude. And three things will last forever, faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is love. Some of the most iconic verses in the Bible, and it just gives me goosebumps that those were written right here in Ephesus. But the Christian message wasn't always super welcomed here. One of the biggest industries in Ephesus was idol carving. Just do it. So Christians preaching to worship one god and do away with the countless Roman gods was bad for business. In Acts chapter 19, there is literally a riot that takes place in the great theater where we started our tour. But the Christians didn't give up, and Paul later wrote the letter to the Ephesians that also became a book in the New Testament. Paul wasn't the only disciple with the history in Ephesus. So after a delicious bite to eat, seriously, come here if you visit Ephesus, it is so good. We are heading to the Basilica of St. John. I changed clothes because I was recording a TikTok dance and this dress was much cooler, so I'm still wearing it. We are now at the Basilica of St. John. He also lived in Ephesus and he was said to have like literally written the book of John in the Bible, the Gospel of John, while he was here in Ephesus. And like there were a couple times when he was here where he got in trouble. Yeah, he stirred the pot a little bit and the uh, the result was that he was exiled to an island that's nearby and that's where uh, he wrote Revelations. John had a lot of history here. But uh, here at the Basilica of St. John is also uh, his tomb. So that's super cool to see and it's just super cool to be like, just walking around in an area where like so much of the New Testament was written, really special and cool to like be where the disciples were and where the writers of the Bible were and like, it's just really beautiful. I think it's called a niche. They're inside the niche. They do say when you make a YouTube channel, find a niche. Found one. This is a literal niche. <laughs> On our tour in Istanbul, we actually learned about Justinian the First and how he is one of the people that converted to Christianity and was like a big beginner of the movement, but also how he is the reason why like the word justice exists, like he was just Justinian. And uh, so anyway, he's also the one that built this basilica, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, all through Europe, you see these like Baroque and classical style churches with the gargoyles and all the usual like gold uh, leaf and things you're used to, but this, this is like a Roman style church. You get like the pillars, and like, what did we learn today? The Ionian pillar tops that look like scrolls at the end. I like this, this crossover. It's so pretty. Collab. Madventure times church times Roman architecture. Ephesus has always been a popular spot for religious tourism. Even back during Greek rule, people would travel from all over to see the Temple of Artemis. This is one of the seven ancient wonders of the world. Or what's left of it. Wonderful. Our final stop is to the home of Mary, mother of Jesus, who is said to have come here with John. It has truly been such a special day exploring the biblical and Greek and Roman history. Thank you so much for being a part of it. If you've enjoyed this, please hit those subscribe and like buttons. They truly help so much. And we'll see you on the next one.